Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we shall experience the journey of diabetes through the eyes of Cyber Bunny from Japan to Hawaii. Welcome, Cyber Bunny. Hey, Wendy, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, I'm so excited to hear your journey and just make a difference for many people that are listening in. So before we get started, I really want you to just share a little bit about who you are. Tell us about yourself. All right. Um, I'm Cyber Bunny. I'm a Japanese American content creator based in Tokyo and Hawaii. A lot of people know me for my hiragana song. It has 1.4 million views on YouTube. And a lot of people learn and start Japanese from that video. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So yeah. you go back and forth from Japan to Hawaii. You got the two best places in the world. And um, I know you just must really love just sharing about when you're in Japan, you probably talk all about Hawaii. And when you visit Hawaii, you talk about Tokyo. So tell us what, what started this all for you, this uh, content creator? Well, like you said, um, I'm living in the best of both worlds, bridging the gap between two cultures, the West and the East. And um, I usually make content for people who are looking to live in Japan. Um, these are students, expats, military, um, just a lot of people love Japan. So I want to share more about my culture. Uh, I talk about unwritten rules, social behaviors, my personal recommended spots. Um, and currently I'm promoting hotels that people can check out in the Tokyo area. Wow, and I'm sure besides hotels, I mean, everybody must want to know where's the best place to get ramen or the- I best got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I bet yeah. you know that you have to go and check all these places out so you can make the best recommendation. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. If you want ramen, I got a video for that. If you want yakitori, I, I know some places. Wow. <laughs> and of course, I, I know I've seen you in many different kimonos. And so if someone is going to Japan, I would look up, look you up, and I'm sure you would have the best spot to share with us about where the best kimono fashion can be found. Is that right? Oh, yes. Yeah. My grandmother has a, a closet full of kimono because she used to do traditional kimono, I mean, traditional um, Japanese dancing. Wow. So I got so, to inherit a lot of that. Whoa, and so are you inviting us to come to grandma's closet? <laughs> I actually made a video about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sure in Japan, um, you must have seen or like a lot of halals. The Japanese women are so excited about the Hawaiian culture. And uh, I bet you your job is so busy there because they must be asking you about the Hawaiian entertainers and the hula and the halals. And they're very competitive because they love the Hawaiian culture so much. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm not too big on the Hawaiian culture, but um, the Japanese do love Hawaii so much. And yeah. Yeah, I actually see some TV shows um, where they're dancing hula and it just makes me so nostalgic of Hawaii. Yes, of course. And you know, um, more and more, um, the local entertainers love going there because of course, you know, the Japanese uh, culture and all their, you know, their hospitality is over the top. And so not only do our performers and our dancers go there, but they love the way they get treated with such respect, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just the Japanese culture. I'm sure that's, that's what you exude as well when you're there. And then when you come to Hawaii and you, where you're the Japanese bunny, the cyber bunny that you are, people must just fall so in love with you because of your graciousness. No, no, but um, kids do love me so much. I just went to the Okinawa Festival, and then the first people that spotted me were kids. They oh, wanted to take a picture. Wow. That was so nice. Wow. Okay, so tell us more about the Hiragana song. Like you said, 1.4 million views on YouTube. That's crazy. I know, that's crazy. I didn't even expect it to be this popular. Wow. But, um, yeah, I made this about four years ago, and mm -hmm. I wanted to teach Japanese language and culture. That is my life mission, and 
um, I wanted to teach in a very fun, entertaining way. Because I, I personally don't like textbooks. I don't know about you, but <laughs> that's what we get in along, girl. <laughs> yeah. I love music and entertainment. Yes. So I feel like this is the best way to learn. Okay, so educate Auntie a little bit. 1.4 million views. That means it went viral. Do people do do people make money when it goes viral like that? It it depends. Yeah. Um my this particular video um, went so viral that YouTube had to slice my AdSense in half because, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's like a compliment or anything, but um, yeah, it kind of sucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. So I know that um, you love entertainment. You love singing and dancing and just sharing the like how we share the yellow spirit. I'm sure when you're there, you talk so much about that. And when you are back or you come back to Hawaii and visit, then you speak about the Japanese culture and you both ways you educate on these two very excellent lifestyles. But I also know that you have a something that you, you have a little health challenge and um, not many people know about it because you're just the cyber bunny. You're just the happiest, cutest person around in any environment. But there's a more serious side of you. And I'd like to dive into that a little bit. So can you share a little bit about your health challenge with us here today? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm really happy to talk about it here because um, I don't, I feel like everyone struggles with something. And yes. for me, it's type one diabetes. I was diagnosed at age 15 in Japan. And some of the symptoms I had to undergo were um, uh, weight loss, uh, constant thirst, going to the bathroom, feeling fatigued. So um, my uncle said, why don't you just check your blood sugar uh, since we're having a fair in the park? So I did, and my sugar was uh, 300. So a normal blood sugar would be about 100, you know, 80 to 120. But um, so we were like, this is not good. We have to send you to the hospital. So I the day before I had to fly back to Hawaii, um, I was in the hospital. Wow. And I was diagnosed. So. Wow. So now you get this diagnosis, your blood sugar is over the top. And do they give you the diagnosis that you are type one at that visit or is it determined later? Uh, I'm, it was such a long time ago, but I feel like I went when I went back to Hawaii, I was diagnosed, I was in the hospital again. That's what I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kapilani Hospital. They took care wow. of me. Wow, wow. So that's amazing because, um, and, and, and the good thing is that you did go to the hospital. Some or a lot of people find out their blood sugars or they don't even go to check and they just live like that. And it, whether it's in denial or they just, they just don't know because they don't go to the doctor, at least you check. And then you took action you know, on that. And so Cyber Bunny, that to me is success because, you know, I always, I always say that success is not just being at the right place at the right time, but success is being at the right place at the right time and taking action. So you found out and then you took action. And so now from that point on, you're diagnosed with type one diabetes. What does your lifestyle look like now from that point? Uh, as a child, growing up, I didn't like chocolate. I didn't like candy. I was eating very healthy. Um, but now that I have this condition, I'm craving chocolate and oh, no. candy. <laughs> and so it, I got really depressed at one point because I was in high school when I was diagnosed and I was looking at my classmates and they were all eating junk food and uh, and I had to sit and watch that. And it was really uh, a struggle for me because I was like, well, I want to eat that, but I can't um, unless I plan I'm planning to run a lap uh, afterwards. But I really had to take my diet and exercise seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like everyone should be on a low carb diet. <laughs> right. Whether they're yeah. diagnosed or not. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so I feel like out there, listen to Cyber Bunny. You should be on a low carb diet, whether or not you're diagnosed as she is um, with this uh, uh, challenge. 
So that's very good advice coming from you. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of unusual that you didn't like chocolate and sweets, but now that you shouldn't have it, now you're craving it. That's There's something weird. psychological about that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. And so now let's see, let's take it a step back. I know also, before we jump too far ahead, I think that you were featured in a Forbes, um, Forbes magazine. Were yes. You? Yeah, tell us about that before we go too far ahead and I, I forget. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, I was, I was, um, I got on the list for for Asia 30 under 30 under social media, media and marketing. And they chose me um, because I represented Japan and I did something different with my brand and yes. um, being relatable and transparent about um, your life really touches the audience's heart. So right. I feel like I have a good relationship with my audience. Wow. And for that, Forbes Asia, 30 under 30, that's an accomplishment because Asia is kind of big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> kind of big. It's not like, you know, um, yeah, so that's a great accomplishment. I'm so proud of you. Thank and, you so uh, much. Yeah, that's that's a hallelujah, man. And so for media, marketing, and social media. So, I mean, I love your look, I love your heart, and you know, the, these stories that are gonna continue to uh, be produced by you is just gonna be very successful and just pick your topics carefully because everyone's gonna wanna hear from you, right? <laughs> they will, and now that you're talking about a challenge and you know, a lot of um, Social media people, they don't dive into some personal challenges like what you're sharing uh -huh. with us now. Um, this is very, very important. Very yes. important. And so um, I, I, I just, for the Japanese people, for the American people, I mean, tell us, tell us more about the, the difference in contrast between these two cultures as well with their diets and their lifestyle. I definitely see uh, a huge difference between like lifestyle in Japan and America. I currently I'm living three months in Japan, three months in America, going back and forth and I feel my body change. Wow. It is. Yeah. So when I'm in Hawaii, um, even though there's like the outdoors, you can go hike, you can go to the beach. I feel like I have to make time to, to get my exercise in. Whereas in Japan, you're just naturally moving. Um, at the train station, there are stairs. My house has, it's a two-story house. So I'm always moving and I don't have to put in gym time. Uh, that was the major difference. Right, right. Uh, do you go to the gym a lot? I personally do don't time? go to the gym. I kind of do the Asian style here. I walk as much as I can because I once lived in Hong Kong and that's kind of ideally the same where parking is such a problem, not everybody owns cars, public transportation right. is best. So you're running for the uh, mass transit, you're going up and down those massive stairs, going from one platform to the other platform, you know? And again, I know that you wanna talk about the portions of the food in Japan, uh -huh. Asia versus Hawaii, right? So, I mean, do right. you get food when you're in Japan? Yes, I do, and I pay half the amount in America. Yes. It's the price and it's the portion. Yes. That's a huge difference. Yes, yes. You know, um, that's the good thing about going to Asia. Um, yeah, some, sometimes it's pricey. Um, so yes, you eat what you just need and enjoy that and savor every bit of it. But the walking and also um, depends where you go in the U.S. Of course, in Hawaii, it's hot but it's and humid. But in Asia, I mean, I'm comparing Hong Kong, Japan. It's humid. Is that yeah. Right? I mean... How do you stay so pretty and keep your hair so beautiful when it's what so else? humid? Filters. <laughs> <laughs> do your ears get floppy because it's so humid there? You know, I mean, I, I don't know, but it's very humid. And I know we get used to it, but that's part of the good part. I look at humidity, high humidity as a bonus because we, we excrete more. We, we perspire more. You know, you burn more calories because you're hot, right? But um, mm -hmm. so just talk to me about like even a size of a donut. Are the donuts the same size in Japan as it is oh, in Hawaii? Donuts in Hawaii are so huge. Like I have to <laughs> eat that with someone. 
Whereas in Japan, <laughs> like it's good for one person. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I yeah, there's more value that you get in in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, you know, in Japan, um, I know they really try to teach you well wellness care. You know, and they mm-hmm. try to help you to deal with your issue, and they don't just mask it. So tell us about that. The medicine practices of Japan and uh, in the U.S. Sure. Uh, I see a diabetes uh, endocrinologist both in Japan and Hawaii. And the major difference that I've seen is that um, in Japan, uh, like you said, you work on the foundation. So uh, make sure that your diet and exercise are um, are doing are you're doing it daily. And um, whereas in America, they just put a band aid and they say. You can eat whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Um, just add medicine, and I feel like that's just a, an easy way to stop the real issue. Right. And they just want more money for the pharmacy. Right. Right. So now, being that you're living, you know, in both worlds, which do you practice uh, more religiously? Or I like to religion? take. I like to take the Japanese approach. I feel like it's better long term. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. What you're doing, whether you're in Japan, I don't care where you are in the world. I think if you continue with that philosophy and lifestyle, um, and if we can encourage more of the people here in Hawaii to do that, you know, mm-hmm. instead of just saying, "Well, I want to eat that. I want to eat that pie," so or that steak, so I'm just gonna double up on insulin or I'm going to just, you know, pump it up. But um, what you're saying is that, you know, your lifestyle, you're walking more, your portions are smaller. That's the basic health um, uh, um, prescription right there. So you share, yeah, yeah, you share that. That's so key. And coming from a young lady as yourself, sharing that with us, I mean, we got to listen to you, Cyber Bunny. You know, right? Because <laughs> you're, you're living it, right? You're living it and it's working. And as I said, coming from a younger generation, telling us what we, we should do and what's better, I think mm-hmm. um, it has a lot of um, uh, value that we need to be doing more of that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. And I don't want um, anyone my age to suffer type 2 diabetes in the future because they were eating so bad when they were younger, my, my age. I don't mm-hmm. want them to face the same consequences that I have to, because right. I'm not saying to have, I'm not saying your life is miserable when you have type one diabetes. You just have to learn how to manage it, mm-hmm. and it takes time. Right, and I think in Japan it might be a little bit easier. I mean, um, if you just stick to the traditional diet and their foods, you know, versus what we have in America, everything is all coming from a can or a bottle or a carton. But in Japan, you know, they're still doing a lot of things from scratch. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, the Asians, uh, we're also known to be, a lot of us are lactose intolerant, which is good because then we won't eat all those cheeses and ice creams and drink all that milk. So Mm -hmm. being a non-dairy, um, I think in Asia, you might have less temptation. Even your desserts are not like what we have here. The only difference is your rice, the rice in Japan, but the rice in Japan is outrageously delicious. It's so on It's divine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, but, but yet it's a better quality of rice as well. But it, the taste is, there's no comparison to, I mean, you just go to a train station and eat a musubi. And that is like you're in heaven and it's just a bloody musubi. It's just rice and nori and seaweed. But it's so good because the rice quality is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Right? And so... So are there lots of processed foods and all of that in Japan as well? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, snacks are all processed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to stay away from dairy. So I drink almond milk and oat milk, you know, just put in my coffee. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel that Japan has better quality in food in general. Yeah. And so, you know, like now when you shop local in Hawaii or on the mainland, um, there's a lot of uh, keto diet, you know, food, non-GMO, vegan, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. Is it very accessible to find this quality of food there in Japan? 
You know, I made a video about this. Uh, veganism is not that popular in Japan. Only 2% of the population practice veganism. And so um, you see it on the TV and on the news all the time that they really focus on a balanced diet. Yeah, excellent. Wow. And so that's another great point that you brought out, uh, Cyber Bunny, is that you see it on the TV that they're promoting, you know, a balanced diet. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line, right? When, when the government or our media will back us up, you know, like what you're trying to say, you have to do it in your social media content. But if they put it on mainstream media, how much, how many more people could they reach? But your job gets harder, Cyber Bunny, because you have to reach all those people with this great knowledge and information because it's not being produced on, on, on regular, you know, multimedia on the station. So you got a big job. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, I was just, job. I was just doing this for fun. <laughs> so, yeah, and keep it fun. Keep the content fun. And uh, that's how people will receive what you have to say. But you're going to be saving lives and helping so many. So that's why I'm so excited about all of what we're, we're speaking on today and all the future presentations that you're, work you're going to be working on. So I want to ask you, what would you say is your biggest struggle with diabetes? My biggest struggle is to keep a balanced lifestyle, not just diet, but a lifestyle between work and your personal life. Because in Japan, um, have you heard about burnout? Yeah. Uh, Which yes. is, yeah, people work so much that they forget to live a life. Yes. yes. So. And it's very obvious. Um, I'm sure the younger generation being aware of it, um, they're not going to live like their parents did and mm -hmm. have that quote unquote burnout. Um, but then I think they're going to the extreme and really living life and having a good time. I mean, <laughs> right? It's a different level of work or a burnout. Now, I think maybe they're playing hard, which is good, which is good, but they have to keep, you know, the lifestyle in balance, right? right. In, in that last picture, I wanted to ask you, you know, the thing, the pact that you were holding, it says, until we meet again at the Rainbow Bridge. What was that? That is my um, little white rabbit, my muse. Her name is Bianco. Uh -huh. So this is her. Oh. Um, Cyber Bunny takes after this one, Bianco. Uh -huh. And she passed away uh, right before I left for Japan three months ago. Wow. So I took her to Hokkaido, which was. Uh, that's the location in the photo. Yes. And we went to Hokkaido together. Oh, and is she, her remains are in Hokkaido or do you have her with you? Um, she's in Japan right now. Yeah. Oh, we wow. put her in the garden. Yeah, that's special. I had a little bunny like that too. So I, oh. I know, I know. Mine was called Randy. And yeah, best lifestyle again. And you know, when I see what they're eating, that's how I, I try to structure my life as well. All the healthy foods that the bunny eats. So I have a very special um, relationship with bunnies. And then my daughter is a year of the rabbit. So oh. um, everything is bunny, bunny, bunnies, bunnies, and more bunnies. So yes, that's why when I saw you, I'm like, oh, thank you. And then you were, <laughs> you, were, you were right there together. I was so excited to just, mm, just learn more about what, you're, you know, what, you, what you do. And I'm very amazed. And um, I'm sure that we're going to have you on again. But um, so as I was just alluding to, you know, I find you very inspirational. Um, and I just was watching you and how you were communicating and talking story and just, you know, just your mannerisms. I love, I love this. So just I want you to share your thoughts with all of us about what you're doing and your future endeavors uh, with Cyber Bunny as Cyber Bunny. Hey. I just want to let my viewers know that you can do whatever you set your mind to and don't let any condition um, like, cyber, uh, like, <laughs> like diabetes, in my case, to hinder your past, present, and future, or else it's going to be a waste of potential. You know, like, of course, work hard, but go at your own pace. Don't stress yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, you know, everyone is unique in their own ways because not everyone can be diabetic. And not everyone can be you, so just be yourself. Right. And you know, um, I always say um, because I work here in Hawaii, 
with the Diabetic Association as a board of directors. And so I sat on the board for 14 and 15 years. And wow. I would often teach kids. And I would say, wow, you know, um, I would train them to make videos on their lives. And I say, you know, wow, because of you, I mean, diabetes is so amazing because of you being diagnosed with diabetes. Your family is eating healthier because of you. So you see how blessed you are. You're bringing health to your family because of you. Your mom and dad have to cook healthier because of you. Mm -hmm. And they have to exercise more because of you. So because of you, you're saving your mom's and dad's lives by giving them more health and awareness. And so everything that happens, we always have to look at the silver lining that comes along with it, right? And this is exactly what you just said you do. Right. Exactly. And because of the pandemic, we have even more time for ourselves that we can focus on our health. So now's yes. the time, guys. Yes, yeah, exactly. And so this is what we need to do is just focus on taking all the good things that happen, even in the last 10 years, uh, two years, whatever bad, you know, was that transpired. There were lots of good that came out of it. We have more time to think and figure out for you, Cyber Bunny, you probably were traveling, maybe not as much as you wanted to, but wherever you were, I'm sure you had more time to think about the future and the future content that you are going to be producing. So then you can go and hit more viral levels. And I know that's coming your way. So I was just so amazed by watching you the other night and uh, just wanted you to be on my show to share your heart and, and continue and great success for you. I know it's coming, but um, Cyber Bunny, we run out of time for today. Oh just, no. Yeah, I just wanted to say mahalo or arigato gozaimasu for shedding yeah, much light on this topic of diabetes amongst Japan and the U.S. And I want to let everyone know that we'll be back in two weeks on Taking Your Health Back with Wendy Lowe. So mahalo, Cyber Bunny, and we'll see you again. Thank That's you, cool. Wendy. You're welcome. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.